everybody. My name is Robin Urich, and I'm brought to you by the Circus Arts Conservatory. I'm brought to you by them because they carried me all the way up the stairs. Very nice of them. Well, I work for the circus, and guess what I do? Hmm. I heard lion tamer. No. I heard aerialist. No. I heard concessionaire. No. Nope. I just happen to be a clown. Always wanted to be a performer. Didn't want to be up in the air. So I decided clowning was where it's at. Now, clowning is a very ancient occupation, and the first addition to the modern circus in uh, England and in America were clowns, because originally they were horse shows. In fact, when people didn't have cars, a horse, a beautiful, well-trained horse, was a very cool thing for people to see. But they realized quickly that they needed something else some addition to uh, to the circus, and clowns were the first in. So we've been around for a long time, there's been lots of changes, and uh, I've been teaching clowning, started in 1985, teaching for the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Clown College, oh boy. So I had 250 students throughout the years, and uh, there was 50 clowns in each class. And I went to this school in 1975, and they taught us all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was the hardest thing I ever did. It was 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, and they taught us everything. Makeup, they taught us unicycle, they taught us publicity, they taught us how to have our picture taken, they taught us trampoline, they taught us uh, just juggling, costume, makeup, everything. So it was a good education. Very good. The best school in America. So I've been teaching for quite some time. Started in 1985 uh, with Ringling Brothers. And then when I got uh, here to the Sailor Circus, then uh, my partner, fabulous partner, Karen Bell, and I decided that was the way for the future. And we started uh, teaching clowns as soon as we uh, uh, merged as companies. <clears throat> so, how do I teach clowning? Can you teach somebody to be funny? Classic um, question. Uh, yes and no. You can give them all kinds of ammunition. You can give them all kinds of tools that they can use. I call them, well, in your generation, Legos. Okay, so every time you learn something, you get another Lego. And the more Legos you have, the more complicated a structure you can build. If you only had one Lego, it wouldn't be very exciting, would it? Yay! It's a house. No. So, the more of these things that you have, the better and bigger a structure you can make. Because you never know what you're going to be called on to do as a clown. A lot of it has to do with where you are performing. So, if you're outside, audience can't hear you unless you have a microphone. If you're in a big tent and you don't have a microphone on you, the audience can't hear you. So, things without talking become very important. If you're in a situation like you're being interviewed, then you have to be able to talk. And a big part of it is size, size of gestures, and size of makeup. Now, if you look at my makeup, there's not much there. Small lines, okay? But everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Everything moves. I don't just have a design on my face. If I had a unicorn on my face or something like that, it wouldn't be useful. It wouldn't show character. The reason my makeup is small is that uh, Karen and I are in the uh, school rooms and we're very close to people. In the old days, clowns were an act. 
And so they didn't go into the audience and shake hands and they didn't do balloon animals and they didn't do face painting. They were act people in the show. So they didn't need to know the verbal part of it unless they were doing publicity. Now, Karen and I, because of the classroom and our commitment to education, have to be close and they have to be able to hear us. So you make adjustments because we have the right Legos. Part of clowning is uh, character. What kind of character are you going to play? So in something like this, it's a drawing, it's not a photograph of clowns, but it depicts clowns. So, you know, it's fun kinds of folks. These are tramp clowns. You don't see them very often anymore. Don't see them. Okay, let's see what else we have. So they're the hobo clowns, the tramp clowns, paintings, celebrities. Real good pictures of white-faced clowns. There's three kinds of clowns. The white face, which is what most people are, are most familiar with. The Auguste, which plays the uh, white faces kind of, you know, um, dumb assistant, and the uh, uh, character clowns, of which the hobos are part. Okay? So if everybody was the same, it wouldn't be very interesting. That's why we have different kinds of clowns. And in the old days, there were 50 clowns on the Ringling Show, 50. So that was a lot of clowns. But the space was huge. It sat 10,000 people, okay? So that was a lot going on, a whole lot. No clown history. This is a whistle. Whistle is really is louder than the human voice, and it's really good at getting people's attention. <coughs> Problem is, if you use it for anything else, it becomes obnoxious. It's hard to listen to, it's too loud. Okay, so I always carry one of those cakes. And what I do is I carry one of these. This is a kazoo, 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 kazoo. Used to be one company in America that made them. It was in Eden, New York, the kazoo capital of the world. Oh, cool. <coughs> What's cool about this is it is a musical instrument. Simple, very simple, and very cheap. You can buy these at Walmart, you can buy these at the dollar store, but here's the secret. Big end, little end. You blow it, you uh, operate it from the big end. Okay, it's got a little piece of wax paper in there that vibrates if you do it correctly. So if I just blow, blow through this, nothing is going to happen. But if I hum, so if I hum into it, then it'll make the sound, and it's not too loud, and it's not too obnoxious, okay? So with this simple thing, if I can hum, play a tune. It's very cool. People like the sound of this. People don't like the sound of this. <laughs> so, kudzu. Other clown elements. Juggling balls. They are different because they're beanbags. 
They're actually filled with uh, bird seed. And the reason they're filled with bird seed is that it makes it so they don't bounce. So if you drop one, it stays where it is. In the old days, we used to do, use very bouncy balls, uh, lacrosse balls. And if you lost one, one got away from you, it bounced so much you had to run after it. Whereas these, it's going to be there. Okay, so that's why bean bags became popular. And the reason they have bird seed in them is that they're heavy. Okay, so that your hand knows when the ball is in the hand. If you take something light, oh, there it is, like a ping pong ball, hard to catch. It can bounce out of your hand so light that you wouldn't even know it was there. So if you're a really good juggler, you can juggle something light. But it's best to have something that has some weight to it. Okay? And because these are razor sharp, razor sharp balls, precautions have to be made. Okay, preparing to juggle. There we go. I'm ready. Eye protection, check. Head protection, check. Razor sharp balls. Now, there's a way to juggle these on the surface. If I throw this up in the air, it runs out of the energy that I gave it with my arm, and gravity pulls it back down to Earth. Gravity is always working on this. It goes up, it comes down. So, I can't uh, slow that down unless I throw them higher. If I throw them higher, and I'm a beginner, it, it's hard to throw them equally especially since you have a strong hand and a weak hand. So I'm right-handed. Some people are left-handed. Some people are ambidextrous, so they can do both. But the left hand is going to go lower than the right hand when you throw. But if you keep them on the ground, keep my hands on the balls, I jump the ball, I pick up the ball I jumped, I move it over. I jump the ball, I pick up the ball, I jumped, I move it over. I jump the ball, I pick up the ball, I jumped, I move it over. Now this doesn't look like too much. I keep my hands on the ball so that I'm only looking at one thing. If I take my hands off the balls, how many things am I looking at? Three. Now how many? Step two is you pick them up and drop them straight down. If you let them go too early, they're going to roll. Step three, you roll them over each other. So, that's a part of the world of clowning. And it's all about these little Legos. You can take something spectacular and make it ordinary, or you can take something ordinary and make it spectacular. It's all up to you as the clown. You just have to show people. Goodbye, everybody. Good to see you. And we'll do this some more because it's really cool.